Well, hello, Pray and Share Warriors. How are y'all doing tonight? I am doing great. It was a good, productive Monday for me, and that's good. And so tomorrow, I'll have time to do some more things. I did all my errands today. Try to do some more on Wednesday. But tonight, we are going to continue our study on Psalms. And we're going to do Psalm 17. But I want to also talk to you about um, doing a 21-day prayer and fast with me. I started mine today. I started my 21-day. I'm praying for our nation for 21 days. I'm fasting from sugar, which is going to be so hard, like the white sugar cakes, pies, all that good stuff. I'm fasting from that. I've got to add exercise. I'm adding something. I'm adding exercise for 21 days. I want to I want to be consistent. Uh, hopefully I'll create habits is what my prayer is. But more than that, my prayer is that our land gets healed. That Things that God starts breaking chains of addictions, chains of lawlessness, chains of so many things. But let's pray. And I'm going to read my song share. Um, I highly recommend that you go and listen to this song because it is such an awesome song by Carrie Job. I did not. I did do the lyric video to this, though. And when I do that, I feel like the Holy Spirit is helping me pick pictures to go with the lyric. All right. Well, let's pray. Let's go before God and pray. God, we just come to you and we just pray, God. I'm sorry. I have something on my hand. I thought it was a scab. We just pray, God. We just come to you and we praise you because you are on your throne and you are in control God. there is nothing that you do not know that is going on God you are the great Jehovah you are the great I am you are mighty magnificent and powerful and miraculous and God you are our creator our sustainer our provider our protector you are our shelter in the storm you are our strength and our refuge. You are from everlasting to everlasting. You have always been and you will always be God. We just, we thank you, God. We know that you are the righteous judge, that will judge all unrighteous. God, We, but we thank you because you are loving and kind and com compassionate and caring, God. And you are patient. You want none to perish, God. Thank you for loving us as your children. Thank you for calling us. Um, we love you with our whole heart, our soul, our mind, and our strength. And God, we do. We lift up our country to you, God. We just pray, God. We pray for our country. We pray that you would humble us, that we would come humbly before you, God that we would repent of our sins, that we would turn from our wicked ways, God, and that you would see the sincerity in the hearts, God, and the minds of the Americans, God, and that you would heal our land. We need healing, God. There's so much division. There's so much hate. There's so much idolatry. There's so much evil. There's so much deception, God. But we know that Jesus is the cure that we need for all these things, God. And we just pray, God, that many people would call out the name of Jesus and be saved. Right now, like they wouldn't even know why they're being drawn to Jesus. But God, that they would be drawn to Jesus, to be saved. That you would open up their eyes and their ears to truth, God that you would open up their hearts 
and for the prodigals, God, for the prodigals to come back, for them to um, repent, for them to have the re relationship with you reconciled, God. God, we pray for all the disasters that are going on in our country and all over the world. God, we just pray that these people's needs would be met with the hands and feet of Jesus, the loving compassion of Jesus, that they would miraculously be met, that they would have no doubt that through you, God, their needs were met during these disasters, that you did, you're the one that protected them. You are the one, God, that they would have no doubt. We pray, God, for people that have lost loved ones. We just pray, God, that you would um, give them peace, comfort, and strength, God, that you would be with them, that they would feel your presence, God. I just saw another one on Facebook. Every time I open up Facebook, someone has passed away or someone is sick, God. I just pray that you would heal the bodies of the sick, God that you would alleviate pain and that you would eradicate this disease by the blood of Jesus. God, thank you. We praise you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My computer keeps making a weird noise over here and I don't know. I don't know. My eyes were shut, so I don't know why it was making a weird noise. Okay. But anyway. So happy to be here. I'm going to read what I wrote about this song and about our country, too. This song is based on 2 Chronicles 7.14. We may, we read that the other night. We may read it again tonight since we're kind of, I'm really hoping that Psalm 17 is going to go along these lines because if not, we're going to have a hodgepodge again tonight, but this is where I feel like God is leading me to share. So I love this song and message by Carrie Job. If you've been on my channel for very long, you know that I love Christian music. I love praise and worship. I love contemporary Christian. I like more of the upbeat contemporary Christian, not the really, really slow ones. I like the more upbeat ones. Anyway, uh, Heal Our Land is the name of it. I made this lyric video a few years ago with guidance of the Holy Spirit. Our land needs healing. There is so much hurt. There is so much hatred. There is so much division. There is so much greed. There is so much sin. There is so much addiction. There is so much lawlessness. There is so much blasphemy. There is so much idolatry. There is so much, too much of all of these things. All of these things that I mentioned, God does not like. Who can wash away all the sin and heal our land? Jesus can. Jesus will. We must humble ourselves and repent of the blatant sin against a holy God that created us all. We must turn away from our evil ways. Then God will heal our land. I feel like many of us are willing to do all this, but we need more to join us. We can continue watching our country go down this path. The world continuing down this path. But it will not get any better. The time is now to call upon God to break all the chains of sin to heal our bodies from a disease that was not intended for us to fight off. It is time for us to stand up for all of God's truths above the enemy's lies. It is time for it is time to come before our holy God on our knees. It is time to be broken for all that we see and hear that opposes God's word. It is time to tell all we see the gospel of Jesus. Till all we see the gospel of Jesus. Jesus is our only cure from sin and disease. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved now. If you are already saved, share the good news of Jesus to others. Our time is running out. Jesus is the only path to heaven and forgiveness of sin. 
time is short. The time is now to turn back to the one true God. God wants none to perish. John 3, 16 through 21. Call upon the name of Jesus and be saved today. So that's what I wrote this afternoon. I felt like that's what was on my heart this afternoon was that our land needs to be healed. And many of you that have been coming here since day one knows that this channel started because of a ministry calling that I felt very strongly. And since I couldn't go out and minister to people and talk to people and share God's truths and the gospel of Jesus, I felt like God had led me here. But I started, when I started this, I would read Second Chronicles 7, 14 and 15 every night. And I would get on my knees and pray before my back started bothering me every night and every morning. I would like get up at 6.30 so I could be in here at 7.14. I was committed to the 7.14 time. And then I just moved everything up to 7 because I thought, well, it just makes more sense. I used to get on here at 7 and talk to myself for 14 minutes, but that was kind of silly, too. Okay. The name of this is Psalm 17. Prayer with confidence in final salvation, a prayer of David. Hear a, hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer, which is not from deceitful lips. Let my vindication come from your presence. Let your eyes look on the things that are upright. You have tested my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and found nothing. I have purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept away from the paths of the destroyer. Uphold my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear to me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness by your right hand. O you who save those who trust in you, from those who rise up against them, Keep me as the apple of your eye. Keep me as the apple of your eye. That's interesting. Hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked who oppress me, from my deadly enemies who surround me. They have closed up their fat hearts. With their mouths they speak proudly. They have now surrounded us in our steps. They have set their eyes crat crouching down to the earth as a lion is eager to tear his prey and like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, confront him, cast him down, deliver my life from the wicked with your sword, with your hand for men, O Lord, for men of the world who have their portion in this life and whose belly you fill with your hidden treasure. They are satisfied with children and leave the rest of their possession for their babes. As for me, I will see your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I wake in your likeness. So David, David wrote some great psalms. He just did. He was always crying out to the Lord. Always. People were always pursuing him. He had enemies that pursued him constantly. Sometimes his own family members were pursuing him to kill him. King Saul tried to kill him several times, but God protected him each time. Okay, the study part of this, uh, 17, 5 through 7. David was confident that the Lord would protect him as an innocent person facing difficult circumstances. The choice between this psalm is the first to be identified as a prayer 
in its heading or superscription. Having walked in the paths of God and chosen the way of life, the psalmist expressed confidence that God would hear his cry for help uttered under extreme pressure, for loving kindness. See Psalm. Okay, the language reflects Israel's song of deliverance at the time of the Exodus when the Lord defeated the Egyptians' army. So that's talking about 17, 5 through 7. That on the Okay, God's keeping power is illustrated in tender imagery, apple of your eye, denotes something most clear, most dear and precious. Under the shadow of your wings may refer to the Ark of the Covenant as a symbol of God's presence or the protection by which God brought Israel to himself. So again, David asking for protection, crying out, um, telling God that um, what he is to him and that he needs help. Prayer with confidence. Because David trusted God. David David knew that God would protect him. Because he had protected him so many times. Okay. Well, let's move on to Romans. Romans 1. I felt led to read this yesterday. But I want to tell you something that I did yesterday. I wasn't here last night because, was I here Saturday night? Yes, I was here Saturday night. Saturday night, I started watching Let Us Worship, Washington, D.C. And it was so good. And it was in a two-part series. So Saturday night, I watched part of the first night. And then Sunday morning, I turned it on. I just wanted to listen to some praise and worship. Well, I got very mesmerized by the praise and worship and how good it was and how people were being moved. And I felt the Holy Spirit moving in me, too. After the last two weeks of all the really destructive things that had happened, I really felt like maybe I needed that too. So I stayed late and I made it to Sunday school, but I was really late. But anyway, I got to praise my experience too. You know, sometimes God keeps us where we are because he wants us to have an experience. And the only way we can have that experience is if we watch it or read it or, you know, do the Bible study, push through and do the Bible study. It's the only way that we can receive that experience. And so I, I, um, I watched the rest last night and it was three hours long. It ended up being like three and a half hours long. Anyway, it was so good. Oh, it was so good could just feel the Holy Spirit there amongst the people. People got saved. People got delivered from addictions. They were putting their drug paraphernalia on the altar. They were throwing their cigarettes on the altar. They were, they were getting delivered from bondage is what they were getting. And it was so awesome to watch that um, be a small part of that. I actually ordered me two t-shirts to support their, um, their movement because they have been to 136 cities. They went to Portland. They went to a lot of places that were really scary places last year 
in the midst of all the Antifa and Black Lives Matters movement, those um, those riots, they they went after the riots, and many people got saved. Many of the people that had been protesting in the riots got saved and baptized. So they saved people and baptized people in Washington, D.C., in front of the Capitol building and on the that lawn right there in front of the Capitol building. I know there's a name for it. But anyway, it was amazing. And my spirit has not been the same since. My spirit is so boosted right now. I'm just excited. I may not look excited, but I am excited in here because I know there is no doubt in my mind that we are the generations that were called to get in this last harvest. It's us. It's up to us. We have to share the gospel. We have to go and witness to people. We have to share God's truths. We have to stand up for God's truths and not stand for man's lies. We have to stand for God's truths. So anyway, that is what I did. Okay. I needed to make sure that I was recording because I wasn't sure. Okay. So all of this kind of led me to Romans 1. And I want to say something before I read this. There are things in here that are going to offend people, but this is God's truth. I believe that God's word is truth. So this is God's truth. And this talks very plainly about sin. It talks very plainly about sin. What it is. What's an abomination to God? You know, God is a holy God. And he does not like sin. He loves the sinner. He loves them. He created them. He loves them. He would take them back like that if they just repent and ask for forgiveness. He would take them back one time. No, he would take him, them back as many times because he loves us. He loves all of us. I know people want to separate us. Well, he loves the Christians more. He really doesn't. He loves all of us the same. That is what loving God that we have. And he sent his son for all of us. He didn't send his son just for us Christians. He sent his son to die for all of us. And that is something to rejoice about, is that God loves us so much. Okay, well, we are reading Romans 1. Paul, a bond servant of Jesus Christ, called to be an apostle, separated to the gospel of God, which he promised before through his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David. Oh, we talked about King David tonight. According to the flesh, King David is in the genealogy of Jesus. I think we've read the genealogy of Jesus before, but we might do it again. I do it from time to time for the youth girls because as as we progress in the Old Testament stories, I want them to see that these people are tied to Jesus. Okay. And declared to be the Son of God with power according to the Spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. Through him we have received grace and apostleship for obedience to the faith among all nations for his name, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. 
to all who are in Rome, beloved of God, called to be saints, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for you all that your faith is spoken of throughout the, wor the whole world. For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers, making request if by some means now at last I may find a way in the will of God to come to you. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established, that is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you, both of you and me. Now, I do not want you to be unaware, brethren, that I often planned to come to you, but was hindered until now, that I might have some fruit among you also, just as among the other Gentiles. I am a debtor both to Greeks and to barbarians, both to wise and to unwise. So as much as in as is in me, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. The just live by faith, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. God's wrath on unrighteousness. This is the very unpleasant part. But these are things that we need to abstain from because they are abominations to God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known to God is manifest in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse, because although they knew God, they did not glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing to be wise, they, be, they became fools, and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man, and birds, and four-footed animals, in creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them to an uncleanness in the lusts of their hearts to dishonor their body among themselves, who exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature rather than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this reason, God gave them up to a vile, to their vile passions. For even their women exchanged the natural use for what is against nature. Likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust for one another, men with men committing what is shameful, and receiving in themselves the penalty of their error which is due. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters of God, violent, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, 
not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Now that is, this is judgment from a righteous God. And God will judge all unrighteousness. And God cannot, cannot be bought. He can't be threatened. And he can't be compromised. So the best thing to do is to repent of sin, get forgiveness, and start all over like it's a new day. Start a new day with Jesus as your Savior. So I know some of that is controversial, but it's in God's Word. It's in God's Word, and I believe God's Word is truth. And whether mankind thinks that all that is okay in 2021 and before 2021 doesn't matter to me because God says that it's not. Okay, well, let's do a salvation message. How do we want to do it? You know, I found this one. Do you know for certain that you have eternal life? I found this on my desk when I cleaned it off. And then I can't find my sheets of all the verses that I was doing. I, don't, I might have thrown them away. I don't remember doing that. But sometimes that happens when you clean off your desk. You lose things. Oh, I was thirsty. God wants you to be sure. God wants everyone to be sure. The Bible says, I write these things to you who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. 1 John 5, 13. Another question to consider is, suppose you were standing before God right now and he asked you, why should I let you into my heaven? What do you think you would say? You know, that's a good question. What would you say? You may not know what you would say, but you can know because God loves you and has a purpose for your life. The Bible states in this way, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. John 3.16 God's purpose is that we have eternal life. We receive eternal life as a free gift. The gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 6.23 We can live a full and meaningful life right now. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. John 10.10 10. We will spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. I go and prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. Eternal life gives meaning to life, yet our sinful nature helps uh, keeps us from fulfilling God's purpose for our lives. Thus, our need is to understand our problem. You know, we read a lot of sins. That God is going to judge. And that is sin. And it separates us from God. We cannot have a close relationship with God if we have sin in between us. So we are all sinners by nature and by choice. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23 We cannot save ourselves. Not by work, so that no one can boast. Ephesians 2 9. So we need a bridge. We need a bridge that will get us from sinful man to the holy God. We deserve death and hell. The wages of sin is death. Romans 6 23. It is true that God is holy and just, and must punish sin, 
but he loves us and has provided forgiveness for our sin. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. The good news is that God has provided for the forgiveness of our sins. God's provision is Jesus Christ. And that is the cross is our bridge. Jesus is God and became man. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. John 1, 1 and 14. Jesus died for us on the cross, for Christ died for sins once, once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, to bring you to God. He was put to death in the body, but made alive by the Spirit. 1 Peter 3, 18. Jesus was resurrected from the dead. He delivered. He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Romans 4.25 That is good news, but the only way Jesus can affect our lives is for us to receive him. The Bible says, Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. John 1.12 so the choice is yours. Our response is to receive Jesus. We must repent of our sin. Repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out. Acts 3.19 Repentance is not a feeling, is not just feeling sorry for your sin. They should repent and turn to God and prove their repentance by their deeds. Acts 26.20 Repentance is turning to God through Jesus and away from our sin. And it's like making a U-turn. As we turn, we must place our faith in Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Ephesians 2.8 Faith is not just believing facts about Jesus. You believe that there is one God, good. Even the demons believe that and shudder. James 2.19 Faith is trusting in Jesus. It's like taking a trip on an airplane. You will never take the trip until you trust the plane enough to board it. Three important questions. Does what you have been reading make sense to you? Well, what I have been reading to you. Does what I have been reading to you make sense to you? Is there any reason you would not be willing to receive God's gift of eternal life? Are you willing to place your faith in Jesus right now and turn from your sin? The Bible says, For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13. You need to ask the Lord Jesus to save you. Read this prayer. Well, I'm going to read it to you. Repeat this prayer. If you would like to be saved, if you would like to accept Jesus as your Savior, then read this prayer. Dear God, I know that Jesus is your Son and that he died on the cross and was raised from the dead. I know I have sinned and need forgiveness. I am willing to turn from my sins and receive Jesus as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Call on the Lord in repentance and faith using these similar words uh, or your own. And Jesus will become your Savior and Lord. Welcome to the family of God. If you sincerely prayed this prayer, you have just made the most important decision of your life. You can be sure you are saved and have eternal life. As you begin your new journey, it is important to realize that Jesus wants to do more than just reside in your life. 
He wants to be Lord of your life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. Romans 10, 9 through 10. Confessing Jesus as Lord is more than just words. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Matthew 7, 21. Confessing Jesus as Lord means trusting him to direct our lives. Trusting Jesus to direct our lives is like driving down the highway with another person. As long as you are driving, you are in charge. If you realize you don't know the way, but the other person does, you might say, take the wheel and drive. Then the other person is in charge, and the two of you take the route he or she chooses. As evidence of confessing Jesus as Lord, you will want to identify with him. The New Testament way of identification is to confess Jesus publicly, Matthew 10, 32 through 33, and to follow him in baptism in church membership, Acts 2, 41. So your assurance, you know you have eternal life because God keeps his promises. You repented of your sin, Acts 3, 19. You placed your faith in Jesus, Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. God heard your prayer, for everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Romans 10, 13, God re recorded your commitment. Rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Luke 10, 20, you need to grow as a Christian. The Bible calls new Christians babes in Christ. 1 Corinthians 3, 1, without certain essentials, babies will not develop normally. The church is the new Christian is to the new Christian what the home and family are to a baby. You identify with your new family by confessing Jesus publicly and by experiencing believers' baptized, baptism. Those who accepted his message were baptized, and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Acts 2.41 Attend church Sunday and share with the pastor that you want to be baptized and become a member of the church. Praying is to spiritual life what breathing is to physical life. Breathing must be regular and continuous. The Bible says pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5.17 Learn to be specific in your praying. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1.9 God's word is to new Christian is to a new Christian what good food is to a baby. Good food is a daily requirement for proper growth. Like newborn babies crave pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. 1 Peter 2.2 2. My best time for daily prayer and Bible reading is, well, I choose mornings. I choose mornings. Learning to witness to a new Christian what learning to talk is learning to witness is to a new Christian what learning to talk is to a baby. Christ commands us to share the good news with others. You will be my witnesses. Write the name of a person who will be happy to see about your decision. Okay. Well, we're going to we're going to quit there. This is um uh, North American Mission Board flyer by North American Mission Board that was on my desk. All right, well, if you invited Jesus to be your Savior through that prayer, then welcome to the kingdom family of God. Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and the angels are rejoicing. You are now saved, sealed, and sanctified by God through Jesus, His Son. So congratulations. Congratulations. All right, well, it is time to give you God's blessing. It is time to get off of here. Again, our time went quickly. It always does. 
All right, number 6, 24 through 26. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Now, if you would like to commit to the 21-day prayer that Let Us Worship is doing, then go to their website and sign up. And I think that they are going to send things out every day. I haven't checked my email today. But I think that they are. And so that we can just progress. I just prayed about our nation today. That's what I prayed about. So tomorrow we will do Psalm 18. I won't be here on Wednesday. But I should be here tomorrow unless I just get so bogged down with stuff that I don't want to sit in front of the computer. Sometimes I do that. Okay, I love to be here and let's pray. God, I just pray for everyone here that is within my voice. God, I pray for blessings. I pray for protection. I pray for provision. I pray, God, that you would be with them, that you would lead and guide them that um, they would feel your presence, God, and that if they're sad, God, that you would replace that with joy, and that you would replace everything that is not pleasing to you with things that are, God, in all lives, in my life, in my family's life. God, I pray for Josie and her family. Josie has started back to work, God. I just pray that you would be with her and give her more and more strength every day, God. Just be with her, protect her, provide for her, bless her, God. I pray for Mr. Mike. God, I thank you that he is better and that um, I pray that he will guide these young men that you have given him charge of, God, that they will see Jesus in him every day, God. I pray for my family. I pray for protection and Blessings and provision, God, I just pray for anyone that does not know Jesus as their Savior, God, that the Holy Spirit would draw them, would open up their eyes and their ears to the truth and draw them to Jesus so they can be saved. God, I know that you chose us for this last harvest before the rapture. God, just give us your guidance and wisdom. Help the Holy Spirit to lead us, God. Help us to walk behind Jesus so that we can stay close. And uh, just bless us with a good rest of the night. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, my pray and share warriors. I'm pretty, I don't sleep good at night anymore. And so I'm kind of sleepy tonight. And I can't have coffee or that will just make things worse. But. Have an awesome rest of your night and an awesome tomorrow, which is Tuesday. I have things that I have to do here tomorrow. I uh, did all my errands today. Got my errands knocked out in one day. But I still have some residual work that I have to do here. So, much love. And cyber hugs. Till I see you again. Good night.